It's underneath the car. Now I've got the winch, the Roadrunner off-road winch. It's actually really good. Um, I uh, do recommend them. I thought they were very good for value for money. Um, motors on this side. I had to build this cradle to fit it in. Um, in between the chassis rails. Um, and it feeds through uh, two fair leads actually because the angle's not perfect. So I might be able to show you that here. So there's one, two feet lead, fair leads. Um, works out well. So, um, also got these recovery points from King P Kingpin Design. Um, they are <laughs> solid. Best recovery points I could find. Um, you can i've even bought these parts so you can put the um i can't remember the name for it now but you put a tube a crush tube inside the chassis van uh so that if you want to snatch from them um you're less likely to stuff up your chassis rails uh but i haven't fitted them yet it's a bit of work that needs to be done to do that uh, i think it's a really good design though it's slotted but not cross shield rotors to keep them cool and not cross shield on purpose so that um you know they get full of mud uh my ball joints you might notice in here that they need a little bit of tlc i've got some to uh to place them with something else you might notice i touched on panard rod um so i got that from apt off-road um but i don't think ben does stuff for d2s anymore and he does some newer stuff like d4s um but uh, it's really good. I'm happy with that. So I've got sway bar links in here from our D3. Um, they're longer, I think they're about 20 mil longer. Um, and the front sway bar links from a D3, put in a D2. I've actually put my front D2 ones on the back to just get a little bit better articulation. Terra firma. Uh, front radius arms so there um, I ended up getting them kingpin as well I think <laughs> I did um, and they're cast corrected as well uh, don't underestimate cast the correction sure there's lots of things that you don't need and you can live without like an adjustable pan hard rod uh, when you only go two inch lift um, but my recommendation is to do it. Um, I'm, I might actually explain a little bit more about that in a minute, actually. Um, I've got rid of the plastic bungs here and put the brass ones in. Um, but little secret, they're actually the same thread as the radiator uh, bungs in the Defenders. They'll fit in there. Terra Firma bars. Yeah, have another look at the Terra Firma, firma radius arms. Um, oh, also brake lines. Hell uh, braided and I think 50 mil extension brake lines. They're really good. Actually, it's interesting how much difference having braided brake lines makes. You wouldn't think so, but you give much more positive feel on the pedal. You have here. 15 mil spacer in the front prop shaft. I'm um, pretty sure it's a Tom Woods one, um, but I was fortunate enough to get this from the wreckers and they didn't know what they had. So, double card and joint. Um, I had to have it rebuilt. Well, I actually had the bottom done, so that's what this is. So, Enduro Tech, see that brand there? Enduro Tech, so they rebuilt. They helped me out by modifying this end for me because yeah, the one to come on wasn't very good actually. <laughs> this bit was fine, this bit wasn't very strong um, and it kept stuffing up unis on me so I, they fixed it for me. The champions. So what I was talking about before about the adjustable um, pan art right, is the reason why that's important is so that this angle is as straight as possible. When you lift the car up the whole axle has to shift to one side and that means this drive line here isn't straight and you might go well 
what difference does it make? You've got universal joints in there. The whole idea is to take up that. And very true. Um, but I find that having these lined up um, puts less stress on this and it lasts longer. If you, uh, you know, get the geometry like it was designed to start with. So what it means is it's only the plane uh, on the lift. So the angle from here down to the to the diff and back up to the transfer case that is affected. It doesn't go this way um, unless I'm flexing. So if I'm doing 100 km hours down the freeway, it is still just going the same. It's, everything's in the same alignment, same geometry. Nothing's getting cooked, heated, or stress more than it was designed to be. So that is why I've got an adjustable front pan hard rod. People asked me why the other day. Um, it might not be an awesome explanation, but that's the crux of it. To fit all this, I've also had to ex put these in. Um, they're Les Richmond automotive mounts. They drop the front cross member. So, you get two different designs from them. This is slightly more expensive ones. I th thought they looked really good and the build quality was done great. So that's why I went with these ones, but you can get block ones. Um, but you need to do that to just get enough space between here so the prop shaft doesn't hit the cross member. This also is a guard from LRA, Ledge Richmond Automotive again. Um, they provide this because there's so many occurrences where these fail and break literally break and just smash everything in your transmission is very expensive you don't want to do that um i've gone to the extra effort of making sure my my prop shaft is upgraded but you know for the cost of the extra protection i thought it was worth it with this transmission that i've got is actually uh it's a zf4 hp 22 slash 24 hybrid and you can find all the information you want on that on the ashcroft website um, but I had Joe at Transstyle Automatics in Hallam help me out. Um, I gave him a whole lot of information and all the bits that he needed for him to be able to do the job. And he'd be more than happy to do it for anyone else, except <laughs> you have to have to make sure that you get, take all the bits to him and get all. You have to do it yourself, essentially. He'll just do all the assembly for you, but you have to get all the all the equipment um, because it's getting rare and harder to find. So um, you provide that. And happy days. All right, so transfer case. I've got the extra sump. Um, I've got a heavy duty cross pin in it because um, I rebuilt it. I've also got, not sure if you'll see that up there, but there is a sleeve in there um, for the intermediate shaft. So going back to the transmission though, this has pushed everything back 15 mil because it's 15 mil longer. Uh, transmission because it's got an extra clutch in it. So you see that it's taken up. It fits in the mounts, not a problem at all. There's nothing wrong with it. It just um, just sits at the back of the mounts. Uh, but that's part of the reason why I also needed this 15mm spacer up here because it's shifted everything back. Awesome transmission, by the way. Love it. So at the back here, we've got Disco, sorry, not Disco, Range Rover Classic prop shaft. That's 1986 Range Rover Classic. Um, and see, don't have a donut anymore. Oh, just so I get a little bit more flex out of it without stressing the donut and flogging them out all the time. Um, oh, yeah, suspension. All right, so Bilstein uh, shock absorbers, front and rear, um, and the springs, uh, Dobinson's from West Richmond Automotive. So these ones are. The rear, I've got a uh, blue and red um, rated, so you can see on there. Yeah, Andrew helped me out with that selection. I really stuffed up my own selection, and Andrew really gave me a call and we sorted it out. So I really appreciate that. Great service. Um, as you can see here, what I was saying before, I've got the sway bar links. These are the front ones off the off this car. I've also got in here the heavy duty shocks, which I believe are valved for a Defender, but you put it doing a D2. Um, so that's a, a special mod that LRA do. 
Uh, I think it's great, but because I don't have any weight in the back of my car at the moment, it was the wrong decision. I should have gone the normal rate shock absorbers. Um, so my advice to you guys is, unless you're gonna load your car up all the time, don't get these ones, get the normal ones. However, if you've got drawers, if I put my drawers in the car, um, I would probably find it a much better drive and it would be perfect and that was the plan. So when I spoke to Andrew about it, I told him I was gonna do all of this stuff and he gave me the right advice for the information I gave him. But I haven't, <laughs> haven't done it, so it's my own fault. <laughs> So you might actually also find up here, that is really close. But that, um, I really need to probably have a shorter rear shaft in here uh, because the transmission's about 15 mil, um, but I've gotten away with it. I've actually bottomed out the rear suspension and uh, not smashed that, so I'm very lucky. <laughs> All right, so, oh, the diffs, so, Diffs are good, they are. This front and rear, like I said, ATVs from Ashcroft uh, and 3.8 ratio cam, tram wheel, and pinion, and it's great. Um, absolutely fantastic. I've, the ratio worked really well with 32s, it was perfect for the 32s in the auto. Uh, now I've got 33s on that. Uh, the, it's not quite right. Um, but it's still okay. I would, I've got no issues with it. I just need a little bit more power down the bottom. Um, so I think these diffs are amazing. Um, I've had, uh, so just going back to the rear diff here. So I've had my rear shoot out the back of the housing before. Uh, Nolan's Brook, um, Tally Track, um, Patrol got stuck. Tried to pull him out, it all went pear shaped, and I put on my diff until they track. <laughs> um, and I had a choice of four diffs in Cohen to choose from to replace them, so that was easy enough. Got me home. However, since then, I've now upgraded them to these ones, and they are really strong. I don't have any issues with them. Um, I've broken, I think, each of twice, front and rear diffs twice. Um, so yeah, so the crown wheel and pinion when I got that patrol stuff or unstuck, they stuffed this. But the cross pin is there a single piece cross pin in the factory diff, and that breaks really easily. And I've had that happen, yeah, I think four times. And I just got over it and spent you know about four grand and just got the diffs done, and it was well worth it. All right, so exhaust. Um, this was like this on this car when I got it. So this is a two and a half inch exhaust. Um, it looks pretty good. Uh, I think getting rid of the center muffler is actually a good idea. My previous car had got rid of the center muffler, uh, except I didn't like it with the straight through pipe. Um, I put a hot dog in it because it just resonated it cool, you know, a little bit droney at a hundred. So if you ever do that, I would recommend putting a hot dog in it. Other people don't mind it though. And to be fair, it's not really loud. I just preferred it. A little quieter. We're gonna cover off pretty much everything here. If you've got any questions, please feel free to send them in. Don't know if any of you guys picked up on this, but this here is my transmission mount. Uh, that is not cool. And a new one. So like I was saying before, 33s. Um, Diff ratio with the 33s works all right. I actually kind of think it's good. I just need more bottom end. So I need to get onto uh, Yose and get some, um... oh, I need a turbo and a retune. You've already got a tune from him. Actually, it's a great tune, uh, but yeah, so 33s, awesome tires, just need more power. So I'll get a VNT would be awesome. Absolutely awesome from, um, uh, TD5 slash performance inside. So hit me up, guys. I really, really, really want one of your turbos. <laughs> so once this COVID's finished, mate, you can come over. Hope you enjoyed the video. Um, if you've got any questions, let me know. Um, just shoot them through on 
however you want with Facebook, YouTube, whatever it is. If there's anything you want to know, if anyone else wants to know anything about where I get my bits from, um, which I've mentioned them in this video, um, they are all great suppliers and I wouldn't hesitate recommending anyone to them at all. Um, so anything you want to know, just send me a message, I'll let you know.